Hello everybody, Neil here. Right, a lot of you will know, um, recently I did a show and tell, if you like, on the Ride With Me track stand, trail stand that I got uh, recently and it came back when I put the video up on YouTube, got a lot of decent feedback. It got some good feedback on Facebook as well. Got shared around on a lot of the adventure riding uh, pages, etc. And uh, there was a little bit of uh, constructive criticism I received as well from one, one chap and he had a fair point and I thought it gave me a little bit of a challenge to actually come out onto a trail and actually do it on the T7 in situ, do a remove and refit on the back wheel. Um, his argument, and uh, quite rightly so, was it was very pro, the centre stand, because it keeps the bike upright and when you remember looking at the original video, we did a front wheel and a rear wheel example using the stand. And when I did the front wheel, I could turn the handlebars to the opposite lock right and down, if you like, and it showed the wheel vertical. I wouldn't have that option on the rear wheel. And what's been suggested is that I come out and do it on the rear wheel. Now, the T7 owners will be aware and know that it isn't just a simple process removing and refitting a back wheel because we've got other things to consider such as the uh, the ABS sensor on the back wheel and we've also got the channel that's a part of the swinging arm that the caliper slides in and out of. We've got to balance the, the wheel spaces etc to get it all to line up when we put the wheel back on along with the chain etc and in real world it ain't going to be as easy as having a centre stand and having it completely vertical. So the challenge was given to me, well, sort of, if you like, to actually have a go at doing it out on a trail in the real world. So what we're gonna do is do a remove and refit using the trail stand. I've brought the tools, I've brought the trail stand itself. I've brought the, I'll come to that in a second. I've brought the chain adjusting spanners and of course a 10 mil socket and spanner, uh, socket and yeah, ratchet, because I've got to remove the um, ABS sensor. So these are the tools we were going to need. We're going to need a, a, a socket, basically, or a spanner for removing the nut or loosening the nut on the back wheel, which we'll do before we actually lift the back wheel. Now I'm using the Rally Raid tool, which I mentioned before. Quick tip for this as well. If ever you're working on your bike at home and you're going on a trail, don't use a long bar to nip up your back wheel because of course you're going to need that bit of leverage just as much to get it off again and you're probably not going to take it so tighten up your wheels using the tool that you're going to take with you on your trail because that way you know you'll have enough leverage to loosen it that's top tip of the day something like this is a great bit of kit from rally raid as we know a lot of people use these they're not uh, hopefully not hopefully hopefully you don't have to use it too often basically what i'm going to do now is do what i said we're going to loosen the back wheel in situ with the uh, rally raid tool so let's have a look down here. The uh, spanner, actually I could do it that way and you get a foot on it, but you've got, it just slightly touches the swinging arm if you push it right in, but I could probably get a foot on that uh, and uh, we'll go from there. But if I get a foot on that, I'm just gonna have a, a little bit of leverage. Doesn't need a lot, that's it. And I've got it loose. And now I can slacken that. That's all it needs, one. One turn, now I've got it slack enough, really, if you like, for uh, working on the bike. And as before, if you're on soft ground, soft ground, you can always do that, which is always, it, and put that back underneath there. That was a better angle than when I showed it last time, because it's not gonna move. You can use that as a, as a nice bit of firm ground. I have got a reasonable bit of firm ground here, so I won't use that this time. Now, so I'll leave that there, not a problem. Right, so what we're gonna do now, is as before we've got the front brake on with a tie wrap i've already done that and that's rock solid because if i lift the back wheel up we don't want it pushing away we're going to get to the stand now i've had a bit of an adjustment from last time i got a message from uh, colin who makes these all along with his uh, engineering friend and he pointed out that he uses a slack on his t7 he's got a t7 as well if you come in here and i'll show you i originally had my nubbin ring here mounted below and he suggested it's a better spot to have it higher up here. It's a really more usable spot. So we're gonna use that this time. If you've got a T7, that's where you need to be to put that into there. And then we can work on which 
hole we're going to use here. So back to this again. I think we're probably about second hole up on this because we're on a bit of a stand. I want to get some wet height underneath this particular section here. Now what I'm going to do, I've got the gear, I've got the one thing as well, what I've got to remember is remember your exhaust might be hot. So while you're messing around here, don't burn yourself on these pipes here. If you're out in the bush or anywhere that's a bit remote, there's nothing worse than a burn. So be careful when you're doing that. Now this is quite simple. I've been making hard work of this, but just watch you don't burn yourself on your exhaust. And all you've got to do is just lift it up and it's, it takes no pressure at all. It might be a 200 kilogram bike, but that was absolutely easy as really. Now that's the stand in the air and that's my wheel in the air. And I'm just going to show you something. This is very impressive. That is absolutely solid. I'm not going anywhere with that. I can swing on it. It's a really good, sturdy. You've got to have some confidence in that. It's, it's very, very good. And you're not going anywhere. So now, let's get to work. Um, what I'm going to do, like all good boys, I've got, I've got my motorbike gloves. But I've always got a spare of working, pair of spare working gloves. Local, local, I don't know what if you've got around the world. Bunnings for us. B and Q in the UK, I think they've got Bunnings now as well. Just get some Trojan tool gloves, bang them in your tool kit. So much easier to work, especially on the back end of a bike when I'm working on it like this. So first things first, what we're gonna do is get the 10 mil spanner. We're gonna get, sorry, the 10 mil socket. I'm gonna loosen up the uh, ABS sensor. Actually, putting gloves on is all right, but you lose a little bit of tactile touch really I suppose is that the right word I think so we'll loosen that off and we'll remove the ABS sensor it can be done without you can actually move in, remove and refit your wheel without doing that but you're taking a bit of a risk aren't you and why when it only takes that long to remove it what I'll do is just dangle it there so it's out of the way I will not lose that bolt I'll put it back in there just so I don't lose it. It's the sensor itself, is that little black item on the end of there. And I just want to make sure that that's out of the way and not gonna get damaged. I suppose that's a good spot as any, just back on itself there. And just keep an eye on that, you don't wanna be damaging it. So that goes back in there until we get going. It's not gonna be in any way. Little socket, just put that back on there. Put it up here, out of the way so we don't lose it. And then of course we've got the chain adjustment now one thing I do because it's a T7 as well a lot of you will already be aware of this when you adjust the chain you don't need a center stand you don't put it on a center stand the chain adjustment on a T7 is done with the side stand and with the back on its side stand but one thing I'm going to do just to give me a bit of a guide if you look down here is just look at that measurement from the back of there to the back of the the chain adjusting spacer there so I'm pretty much I would suggest center I'm at 25 mil. It'll be the same both sides. I'll just double check this side and uh, it is. It's 25 mil both sides. Of course it should be. Of course it should be. I just want to get that somewhere near from when I'm putting it all back together. I don't really need to worry too much about my chain. I can probably get to adjust that a bit more accurately when I get to my destination. But at the moment we can have a visual check and a quick flick of the chain afterwards just to make sure we're happy with it to some extent. So what we're going to do now now if you come around here, we can see from the back of the bike exactly the issue that, that the angle of the tyre that, that we're dealing with. Now this is the problem that, that was quite rightly pointed out. Now don't want you to judge me on the state of my back tyre. That is getting swapped in a couple of days. That is one very tired tyre. So what we're going to do is, now if, as you see, we've already un loosened that nut. We can back it off a bit more now and that's loose. I'm not going to take it off fully. Now what I'm going to do is, where did I put my little spanners? I put them in here, did I? I put them back in here when I was messing around with me. Tape measure. Wouldn't always have a tape measure, but that little thing's so handy. So what we're going to do is crack off the chain adjuster nut. So they've got a nut on the bolt there. I'm going to back it right off, get it out of the way. And then what we're going to do, just move it in a little bit. This is going to give us the adjustment to take the wheel off in a minute. One thing about this as well, which I, which I like, of course, doing it this way, having that angle, I'm slotting in and pulling out the uh, the axle, if you like, 
across. It's not, I'm not working uphill when I'm putting it back in, so that should help. So I'm gonna do is go the other side now and just undo the same side, this side. We're gonna crack the nut. Did you trip over me? Yeah, I did. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is, I think King Kong tightened that. I just wanna make sure I'm not, that's it. Knackering it. Back that right off there. And then we'll do is push this in now. I can, it's a bit of a fiddle. You ain't got all the best tools when you go on your, you haven't got your home snap-on gear or your brittle gear, have you, when you're out on trail? You've got your, you've got your little toolkit that comes with you that you've put together for trails. It's not necessarily the best, easiest stuff to use. It's a, it's a get your home kit, isn't it? Which is important. Which is what we're talking about, isn't it? Really, at the end of the day. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to keep going with this. Get that bolt run right in. And remembering when I go the other way, I'll be looking for around about a 25 mil when I've got it all back together. Which is good. Might be easy with that glove off for a minute with this smidgy stuff. I can run it in with my fingers. That's much easier. Not as easy with the gloves. So I've run that right in. So I've got this adjustment now. I'll do the other side. And then what we're going to do is whip off. That's still a bit tight, that side. I'm going to whip off the... Uh, we're going to mess with the... Um, Axle, then we'll take that nut off and we'll take the wheel out, which is what it's all about. So, when we've got it out, this is the big challenge. I hope that uh, this works out okay because I'm, as I say, I'm, I'm a bit remote from home at the moment. So, it's like throwing myself in the deep end just to prove it can be done without too much hassle. It, is, it isn't going to be as simple as he says at home. At home, I've got a track. Um, paddock stand for this but of course here not at all don't lose your spanners that can go in there right so what I'm going to do now is whip the nut off a little tip here as well I'll have a zoom in on here this is a cool thing this is a washer quite straightforward but there's always a right way and a wrong way to put a washer on. They've got a sharp edge and a smooth edge. So when they press and make washers in a plate, it, the press will come down, put holes in, and it'll have a smooth edge. So you want your smooth edge out every time. Not necessarily important, but if you're a bit, a bit anal like me, that's always a cool thing to have done properly. You know, put the washers on the right way around. Who knew? Right. With that in mind, I don't want to lose that. I will also stick that in the back of there actually could you could actually do with a rag couldn't you really to put it somewhere i'll put it here on a leaf i don't want to lose that i can't go anywhere without it so i should be all right right so now we're at the stage now where i'm going to put my gloves back on and here's the big chance now what we're going to do is prove the fact that this can be done this is the whole reason for this video is to see if we can take this back wheel off and comfortably put it back on so we've got the wheel to there we're confident you saw me swinging on it earlier we're confident we'll take that spacer off that can grow that side and what we're going to do is push the nut out and out it comes this side one thing to remember as well i suppose if you've got some rags it's handy to do it and this is this is the issue that, that uh, matey was talking about in in on the facebook page things like this now would be handy if i had a rag i haven't so i'll have to clean it up before i put it back on so I'm going to put it on dirty floor, not the most sensible. I'll put it there on the leaves to keep it as clean as possible because it's got grease on it, of course, so I don't want to be filthying it up and then putting it back in again. In a day, again, we are looking at just getting ourselves home. So on this side, if you come around this side, I'm fighting with the caliper a little bit and I want to also make sure I don't lose my wheel spacers. So I'm going to drop the wheel out and I'm also going to push it forward. I'm going to try and get this chain off and I'll put that around the back of the swinging arm. I've got it as far forward as I can there. I've got lots of chain loose, there it is. So the chain's off this side. And what I'm gonna do is just drop the wheel out. Job done. So that caliper, can I in fact just go there for a minute? And that's the issue now. I'm off, I've got my back wheel out. Job's a good one. Now you'll notice there my spacer, 
So it's worth having a cloth, isn't it? Or a rag or something. Like I said, just so you can clean these back up. I will find something to do with that before I put it back together. I've got a wheel spacer this side, wheel spacer for the other side. Now these aren't Yamaha ones. I got these again from Rally Raid, funny enough, the same people that make this. They're a slight, they've got a slight beveled edge, slightly better seal, and these are uh, of a better, higher quality than what Yamaha put in. And they are beautiful and they last longer and they've got, they just don't tarnish, which is superb. Right, so the back wheel's off and we're ready to go back. So we'll do our repair if it's a puncture or whatever we're doing and then we can go back in again. Now, what, this is where the fun starts, isn't it? This is what we're talking about with, with, um, the, with the angle of the back wheel that we're working with. Uh, it's not vertical and like you say, it'd be a lot easier on a centre stand. I admit that is the case. Now, so what we're going to do is do the bit. This is going to be the struggle time. But again, it's better than just laying your bike down and doing it on a without a side stand at all, without a centre stand at all, or even a track stand. You've got to have this track stand or a centre stand. Now, this is where we're at. Now, let's get cracked on, see if we can get it back on again without too much of a battle. Now, what we'll do... Uh, if I can just show you here as well, because a lot of the T7 wheel owners will know this. What's very important here is that slider there is here. Now this is the things that that, uh, that gentleman, I can't, as his name's escaped me, he's on the Facebook page. I will message him and send him a video of this and get his address and send him some stickers, because it's a good idea to do this. But that's got to slot on there. And... Uh, what it will do, at the same time, I've got to line that up. I've got to line up the, the disc, like you mentioned, with the brake pads and get it all back together. And that's the, going to be the battle here. So what we'll do first, let's get it lined up as near as for, for starters. And this is where we're going to need a little bit of hip work, a bit of strength, and a little bit of wriggling. And like I said, like he said, it's not going to be easy. And he's right. But, you know, it's a good challenge to get in here and see if we can lift it up and get it working. So let's get this caliper on. Like we said, we need that in the right place. And get that sliding. And you see it's sliding long back and forth on there. So we know that's happy there. And now it's a case of lining everything up all at the same time. Now get my angle right on my wheel. And you know, luckily, if you're in a group ride, you'd have people holding stuff in place for you. But that's, Besides the point in this case, I'm going to want to make sure that I can do this on my own. And it's a case of, it will be, well, like I said, it won't be easy, will it? It's not going to be easy. It's not meant to be easy. What I'll do, in fact, I know that's on the channel there. I could actually use this now with the bits of grass on it. That's all right. I've got the spacer there. I could use that there to hold that in place. That keeps that in the reasonable spot. That's quite handy. Right, that's quite nice, that. How's that. So it's handy to put that there, just to hold, stop that dropping down. So what we're going to do next, of course, is battle with this thing. Put the spacer in. That's in there. And the next thing is the chain. Get that on there. This is why I like to wear gloves. And this bike needs, a, you can see it's been on a trail recently because I've been blatting about on the trails. There's no point in giving it a wash and bringing it up here. I've got to work through all the muck, the mud. Get your crotch right in actually, that's quite a good idea. And you can push and lift it a little bit. Can't really see what I'm doing there, just to, oh, that's it, get the angle. Happy days. And this is why you said it, isn't it? We've got to... Oh, that's close there, that's nice. That got calipers on. Just a case of... And this is what he was talking about, is the, the difficulties of doing it against a, a proper... Stand. What I'm going to do. Can 
I get it a bit further forward there? I think I possibly can. I might just... Get the crotch into it. It is seeming to work. Helps if you lean back a bit as well, actually, get the angle. You can see where I'm wrong with it. There you go. Now I can get my chain on. The problem there was I was at the... There, see that? that chain's on now. That's going to help a lot. Uh, what I did there is lean, I leant back, and I could see I was way out. It's a case of stepping back and having a look at it, if you like. So now, that's made it a lot easier. A lot easier. The important thing, of course, is that caliper onto the slide which I pointed out earlier and there it is, it's on so that's the caliper on which now means I can lift the wheel with my crotch if you like taking into consideration the brake pads if I can get that bit of grass off there to the caliper there Happy, lift that. It's just the lifting of the wheels the issue, but I'd have that problem, I think, if regardless of the... Uh, it is easy with a track stand. Sorry, with a... And that's the exact point of the video. Oh, I'm doing it again, you see, I lean back, you can see where I'm going wrong. There's absolutely... That angle is what he was talking about, and he's right. Which is good, but I just want to prove it can be done. And as we, there we go, it's just a case of break, loosening the pads a little bit. Right, now we're going to lift the wheel, start that, yes. Now what we're going to do is just get that lined up nicely. You can see the spaces are in place. Let me bring it into gear. can see there it's gone through the back end I'm just gonna spin the wheel at that point I can see there just get that caliper make, make you double check that that slide is on the calipers into the uh, slide you can push that home you can see I've got my pads around the disc spun the wheel it's all back on fantastic so yeah that was a bit of a battle so yeah look at that we didn't say it wasn't going to be and that's the point exactly and it was right didn't deny it and it was a good point it was a nice little exercise to come out and do it so what we're going to do now of course is put it all back together and adjust that chain back up as described i'll use that 25 mil gauge initially first things first before we lose them washer on right way around before we lose that spacer there we'll get that back on there just run them up finger tight happy days we'll before we forget of course we'll go back doing doing reverse what we were looking at before so i'll, I'll put that there what we're going to do is get the spanners out the, the 10 and the socket now we need to go back to the abs sensor which is tucked out of the way nice and safe We'll undo that and that'll go back in here. Undo that bolt. That'll go in there. Run it in with his fingers for now, as far as we can. And then we'll nip it up in a minute. There we go. If I can get it on. There we go. It's just a nip, that's all it needs. Right. So, at this point now, we've got that home, this side, I'm going to run it up as far as I can, 
fingers wise or to some extent pretty close that's it so that's the wheel and the chain back in place and it's spinning of course of course we haven't got the alignment so what we'll do now we're happy everything's back in place let's kick it off it's uh, let's take it back off the stand happy days now we'll put this away stop it getting mucky I can go back in here put my old man's glasses back on for a minute and this is when we start looking at adjusting the chain up and in this instance we've got quite a bit of adjustment to find at, at this point now we can we can take off the uh, the front brake so we'll just take that uh, because we're back on the ground and we need to move the bike a little bit so I can get a little bit of movement to sort that chain out so let's just be happy that that's there what we're going to do now is use the which one was it now it's the it's the 10 mil spanner we'll use that and what we're going to do is look for that 25 mil gap and we'll just start moving this back and when i'm at 25 mil i know i'm the same as what i was before uh end of the day end of this ride end of any ride the bike will be taken home cleaned lubed adjusted back up again so we'll double check that but if i've got it 25 mil each side i'm not going to be far away am i in relation to what we were saying earlier it's handy little things these little tape measure in your toolbox it doesn't take up any space and uh, I'm almost there that's about 25 on it accurate best I can down the middle mm, it's not quite is it I want a bit more yet I reckon I'm about 28 let's go a few more turns I can see it moving. Cock on that side. I'll run that nut to there. Let's go to the other side. I'll nip that up in a minute. Same on the other side. And you'll see as I'm doing this, you'll see that chain tightening up. As I get there, got a little bit of adjustment on this one, it might take a bit of a while. I might speed this bit of video up. But you should see that chain moving up. It's a slow process, isn't it? But it's going to get us home. And you know what? I probably made hard work of that. I think I could probably get a bit more practice at doing this. At the end of the day, it's not hopefully you know it's not something you have to deal with very often, is it? You know, it's you hopefully, hopefully not get a puncture that often. Oh, I am happy at that. That's 25. So what I'm going to do now? That's probably yeah, it's a bit slack. Is that still? I'm going to go a bit further, and we'll do the same on the other side. This is the. We'll get this right. These chains are a little bit interesting in relation to the T7 because of the, the angle of everything and how they've designed it for. So what I'll do, I'm trying to, before I get too tight on that, because I know if I go back to the other side. See, that's only, uh, my eyes were shut, that's about 23. And that's taken a lot of it out. If I take another two mil this side, I reckon that that, will be something like, it's not perfect. When I sit on the bike, it's not far off. When I sit on the bike, that'll take a bit more of that tension out because of the geometry of the bike. So we'll have a look, what we'll do, we'll nip that out at that. We'll just have a double, double check again on that measurement to make sure I'm not miles out and I've not read it wrong. I'm actually 23 mil there. Maybe I was in need of some adjustment and I'm 23 mil this side, fantastic. So what I'll do now, I've got my 10 mil on the back and we'll nip that lock nut out. Done. Don't need a lot, same this side. Just need running down a bit more. We'll 
last but not least, of course, while we're, while we're moving along, we've got to nip this wheel up, haven't we? At the end of the day, it's just to get us home. All it needs is pretty much, I don't think I could get that any tighter by hand. So I'm happy with that. That's all back on. Best thing to do now, another, another tip I suppose at this point. Let's go back on the stand, give it a spin to make sure we're happy. And we can see, it's a, let's put it back down to what it was. Uh, second from the bottom. That might be just worthwhile. There's no, in this situation, as long as you're not burning up and you're not getting heat exhaustion, you've got time. Just what I should have done is put the front gear back, front brake back on again. Shouldn't I be careful with that? There's no dodgy noises there. Let's. So yeah, you should have put the should have put the brake back on, but job's done. What we're going to do now is put that away, back in there. Put my spanner away. Let's just have a visual look around. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to move it into a, just push it backwards and forwards, make sure there's nothing obvious. I'm pretty happy with that, I reckon. This week, I'll be going to, I'm going to have a go at hand changing that tyre. I've never done that on a motorbike before. 39 years, I've never done a, a big motorbike tyre by hand, and I think it's it's time I got my finger out and did that. I'm gonna have a crack with that this week. I've got a Conti, no, it isn't. Uh, GPS tractionator motors to go on front and rear. So that's going in the bin, as you can see, it's knackered. So that's it, we're done. Um, good challenge, thank you for mentioning that's worth doing and we've cracked it it wasn't easy it wasn't meant to be was it um and i never i never thought it would be but it's i think for the amount of times you're going to do it i think uh i've proven that you don't necessarily need that center stand thanks for watching i hope that's useful see you in the next one